Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well. Um, welcome to this latest video and first of all can I apologize for the length of time since I've made a video. As most of you or some of you may be aware I'm currently in the middle of moving house and slowly but surely uh, all of my hobby stuff has been packed away and it's all been taken off to storage um, in the new town that I'm moving to. As you might be able to hear there's probably a bit of an echo on my voice because there is nothing left in the hobby room except what I'm about to show you today and then all of that's getting boxed up so this will be the last video I make with my current setup. Um, I'm not gonna lie I have been finding it a little bit weird not doing any hobbying um, but I'm looking forward to getting set up in the new place. I wanted to take a second to show you the little project I've been working on while I've been doing the move and while I've been sort of packing everything up just to keep me sane. Obviously the big projects that I work on such as the First Crusade, the Wars of the Roses and the Zulu stuff, I had to put that all away because it just takes up far too much space. However, rather fortuitously, I managed to come across as I say come across, I basically created a little project for myself, um, which has now become a, a little a little bit more of a, um, what should we say, just just a, a, an interesting side note, but something that, that, that's now developed into uh, a bit more of uh, something a little bit more serious. So essentially, this project has come about because of my mother, and I'm going to blame her entirely for this. And essentially, she wanted to know if there was anything I wanted for my birthday, which was at the, the end of March. And I happened to say, oh, well, the um, there's a new Tolkien um, book out, um, which is his translation of the Anglo-Saxon text um, for the Battle of Molden. And this is it here. So this this book is um, nothing to do with Middle Earth, even even though it's with Tolkien. Now, as I'm sure most people know, Tolkien was a professor of Anglo-Saxon. That was his that was his job. Um, and this is his translation of the uh, 325 line Anglo-Saxon poem that recounts the um, the events surrounding the Battle of Molden, which took place in 991 AD between the East Saxons and some marauding Vikings and Danes. So, um, I'll come on to the, this book in, in a little while um, and, and sort of how it, how it features, but as I'm from East Anglia and I've actually done a lot of work in Molden, the town of Molden in Essex, I sort of thought, well, this might be you know, an interesting little project. So I did a little bit of research on the battle. I already knew sort of the, the, the sort of rough sort of cut and thrust of what was go of, of what happened at the battle. Um, and then the inevitable thing happened uh, for, oh, I wonder if this, this would make a cool project. Um, I wonder how um, I could go about this. And I started looking at models and I thought, well, I'm already Already doing um, things at 28 millimeter with Normans and Saxons, so I don't really want to do it at 28 millimeter. I wonder if anybody makes it at 15 millimeter, and they do. There's plenty of manufacturers that make that at, at, um, at 15. But once again, I thought, well, I do have a 3D printer now, um, so I'd just like to point out this was all in one evening. I went on uh, the internet and I found these. Now, these are a line of miniatures by uh, called Tiny Epic Battles. This is actually uh, for the Hastings and Stamford Bridge um, sort of range. So you have Saxons, Vikings and Normans. Um, and these are actually 10 mil and I just really, really liked the character of them. So as you can see, we have mounted Normans, we have Huskars, we have Vikings and uh, we have um, skirmishers as well. And as well as a few personalities. Now, the this is the danger, I suppose, of 3D printing. I basically, within half an hour of looking at these and coming up with the idea, I had downloaded these, put them on the stick, and had started printing them. I then went to bed, and in the morning, I had a whole tray of Saxons ready to go. Um, now, they actually print off really, really nicely. So here's, here's some that I've, I've prepared. And they're on these little strips. Here's some Huskulls. Now, I really like the character. They look a little bit like Noggin the Nog. Um, if you know what that is, I'll see if there's a picture I can uh, I can throw up on the screen. But um, they're, sl they're slightly heroic. You know, they've got big hands and big heads and the shields are, uh, are probably the most prominent feature on them, which, to be fair at this scale, um, 
is fair enough. Now, I haven't cleaned these prints up in um, particularly because uh, I was trying to get away with not having to change the uh, alcohol in the cleaning tank, so um, I haven't bothered to sort of use a toothbrush to get any of the resin dust out of those grooves, but they've been cured and they're absolutely fine. So I thought these had a lot of character, so I, I essentially have just been working on um, painting up a force for to recreate the Battle of Molden in quite a small scale. Um, what I'll do is I will have a chat to you about the battle and I'll show you what I've painted uh, for it. So, the Battle of Molden took place in early August in 991 AD, and um, we we have quite a lot of information about it because it's um, it's mentioned in a number of chronicles from the time. But mainly, we know about it because of the poem called "The Battle of Molden," funnily enough, um, which was written or commissioned shortly after the battle, possibly um, by the uh, the chief Saxons um, widowed spoilers wife um to um to, to recount his his last battle so it has to be looked at with um like all historical sources with some cynicism because it might lean one way or the other however it does give us a lot of details um but essentially um it took place on the shores of the river blackwater in essex um and it's almost, I don't want to say it's a last stand, it's a stand by the Anglo-Saxons. The uh, marauding uh, Vikings had already um, raided Folkestone, Sandwich and Ipswich and they were working their way up the coast and there was a royal mint at Maldon and they heard this and so they sailed for that. We're looking at a fleet of apparently about 93 Viking ships so they, it's been estimated that there could be around about 4,000 Vikings. Um, the head of the uh, the Saxons in East and in in the East was a chap called uh, Brifnoff. He was an elderman, and Brifnoff assembled the East Saxons and assembled quite a large force, which is believed to be about three to four thousand strong from the militia from Essex and the surrounding lands. Now, this was all following the attack on Ipswich, and Molden was essentially the next <laughs> the next target. Um, so they marched to challenge um, these forces as they advanced on Molden. Now, there is some disagreement about the actual location of the battle, which is nothing unusual. Pretty much every single battle site in um, in history, there, there's debate and um, disagreements about where it took place. And one of the main things here is because of um, a causeway that is talked about in the um, in the poem. But it's the if we go with the accepted account and um, the battlefield trust believe this to be um, correct, then they landed the Vikings that is on Norvi Island, which is to the east of Maldon, um, and this basically gave them birth for their ships and somewhere to wait. Now, while they were on Norvi Island, which was quite defensible, it's believed that the Saxons arrived on the shoreline um, facing them. Now the Vikings picked Norvi Island because it was easily defensible and there was a causeway, a tidal causeway, um, which was the only way on or off of the island unless you, you had a boat. So uh, it was a very, very defensible position. However, this became a bit of a problem for them because the Saxons essentially cornered them on the island. This is if you're accepting the traditional battle site and I will talk about that in a little while. There were some initial negotiations if we look in look at the poem and um, they were shouting across to each other um, and Brifnoff refused to pay the invaders off. They, they said, you know, if you give us your money, essentially we'll go away, as all good raiders do. Um, but Brifnoff essentially told them to stick it and challenge them to battle. When the tide eventually fell, the Viking force attempted to cross the causeway, um, but the Saxons managed to hold them back with relatively small numbers. However, there's, there's some disagreements about what happened next. Brifnoff needed to break the Viking force, and I think the only way he thought he could do this was to actually face them um, in battle. So he withdrew and allowed the Vikings to cross to the mainland. Now, when you read the poem and when you look at some other accounts of the battle, the Vikings essentially say to him, this isn't fair, why don't you just give us a fair battle? And the Saxons say, okay. <laughs> So the Saxons withdraw and they let the Vikings um, essentially cross the causeway and form up opposite them, which was probably not the best of plans. Um, 
I can we all talk about this more in in other videos and when we're actually sort of playing some games but um you know whether it was for honor maybe it's because he wanted to break them in one go i i don't really know there's there's a lot of different um opinions <laughs> on the matter i think we can probably decide that it was a mistake both the sides formed up into a shield wall and the Saxon army waited um, for the Vikings to advance. Bowmen exchanged um, volleys of arrows against each other, but at this point we're not talking arrow storms or anything like that. It was just more of a harrying tactic. Um, and then the Vikings basically advanced and clashed with the Saxons. Now, the fighting was um, very, very bloody. Again, we have this, this talked about in the poem, um, but it would turn against the Saxons because Brifnoth would die in the battle. We have a very, very good account of his death in this poem, which I'm sure has been made to big him up. Um, but it's, 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 you know, ultimately he did die. Um, the main Saxon force, once they realized their commander um, was dead, started to break. However, we do have a really nice account of his own retainers fighting on to revenge his death, killing large, large, large numbers of the Viking force before they themselves are cut down, and we have them, we have them named. Now, again, this could just be propaganda. However, it's it's unusually detailed, and um, I think that that's that's great, and it's also something that we can we can use when when we're wargaming. Eventually, the Vikings win. Uh, they cut off uh, Brifnoth's head and, and um, take it with them. However, because so many of the Vikings were killed, essentially they had to abandon um, their attack on Molden, and it's even said that they had trouble manning their boats um, to leave. Now, the Viking commander, there's some debate about who it was. One um, account says it was Olaf Tryggvason, um, and there are some other um, contenders as well. However, the, the main thing is, is that those attacks didn't carry on and you can in the other anglo-saxon chronicles we can we can see what happened so that's the the rough outline of the battle of molden um so essentially i decided wouldn't it be fun if we may if, if we just had a battle of that you could just break it down to little parts where they're trying to cross the causeway and and all of that and you're shooting arrows at them so what i did was I downloaded these figures now what i'll do is i will um, just get them out and pop them on the table Okay, so here we are. This is what I've painted up so far. Um, and I'm, I'm really, really pleased with these. I think they've got a lot of character. So this is um, from my first plate of prints. Now I had a, a few failed prints on this because I hadn't printed um, 10 millimeter models before and I just needed to adjust a couple of things. But this is everything that came off the first print. Um, all the other prints have been fully successful, but these are very, very nice, characterful. Little miniatures, there we go. They're all in strips, as you can see, and you saw on the uh, sort of the unpainted ones earlier. Um, and I finally found a use for all of these Perry bases that I've been been collecting over the years from my Wars of the Roses project and the Anglo Zulu War project. Uh, these bases are 40 by 45, um, and they just allow you to create a nice uh, a nice block. And then together, when they're like this, they make a very nice shield wall with uh, with lines of lines of men behind them um now all of these have been painted with uh, with contrast paints and then all i've done is on the um the shields at the front i've just gone over and added a couple of highlights on on just the front facing shields or those on the sides i mean these are incredibly small so uh details are not really that important um this one here is the command base i used the uh, the single figure here now he's i suppose meant to be harold from um from the battle of hastings but bugger it for this he's going to be Brifnoff. um and i picked up these flags from 10 mil flags from war games designs um all i did was i clipped off the um the flag that came um, on the this sort of Sort of more heavily armored bodyguard unit here and i just stuck a wire spear in there and to be fair i'm going to put some more across these units here and uh yeah i'm just i'm very very pleased and actually quite excited because i've got a few plans with these that um i'd like to do and um there's a number of games that i think we can play with this um but before i talk about that here's some huskars heavily armored with their axes now these could be dane or um Saxon. The only problem is, I guess they've got these sort of kite shields, which the uh, are not really associated with the Vikings. But I can probably do something about that. But anyway, who cares? At this scale, no one. Um, these are all quite nice. These are the uh, the archers. 
quite fun little models. It was a fun little project to keep me going while I was um, while I was packing. So essentially, what I thought I would do is I would I'm going to visit the battle site. Basically, I'm going to try and recreate a three by three board. Um, based on the topography of the site, I'm going to visit it, going to have a look at everything. Um, Norvi Island is protected, so you have to get permission to go on there, um, so we'll have to see about that. But also, j just creating a battlefield, looking um, at the evidence that's in the poem, and then just playing playing some games. Now, quite luckily, um, Warlord Games make a supplement, a free PDF supplement, everybody. Um, for the Battle of Molden, and here we are, and it's for, for Hail Caesar. Sorry, my camera is so zoomed in, so I was looking at the little guys. Um, we'll look at that in, in a second. In fact, let's look at it now. Let me just get rid of the little dudes. I'll just pop those over there for a second. Out the way. There we go. So here we have a supplement for Hail Caesar. Now I will put the link down the bottom for this. This is just a free download on um, their website, and they set out everything um, to do with the battle, the history. There's um, some photos like the ones I've sort of had a look at already. Norvi Island, they're about Brifnoff. Very, very nice amount of information for, for a free document. A look at the terrain, um, all sort of the marshy terrain around there. Potential formations for uh, an army compositions for the army. So here's Brifnoff and Olaf Trigvarsson there. And then potentially the different phases of the battle that you can play out. Um, stats for the late Saxons and the Vikings, and then, which I love, is um, a further reading um, section if you want if you want to do um, some more research. So could just do all this and then just play a game of Hail Caesar, which is probably what I'm, I'm going to do. But I've been having a chat with Robin, <laughs> Robin, um, who you know um, I play a lot of games against, and we want something I'll be quite keen to do is develop. A very very quick set of rules to play with this based on the, the sort of rules and things that i'm playing at the minute um to see if we can do it I've, i think we could really just play with uh, put, put together a fun set of rules um to play essentially a massive mass battle in small scale um with these forces in a sort of epic heroic uh way i know there's other systems out there but i just want to have some fun and and see what see where it goes this this whole thing is developed because i was um you know i was having a couple of beers and surfing the internet so uh, what can i say um let's talk about the book so tolkien's book now i love the lord of the rings um and i love um tolkien's text now this book here um is split into multiple parts now the main part of the text is tolkien's tolkien's translation of uh, the poem, which is here we are, um, and as you can see, you can see here where he really got his inspiration for uh, the way that the the Lord of the Rings is written and the language and the sort of you know the heroic fantasy. Um, so you can find translations of the Battle of Molden online quite easily, um, but this is a really nice one, and it's just a nice link to um, to Professor Tolkien's work. What's really nice in here is there's notes, and you can then skip forward a little bit and there's all these fantastic little side notes about the way he's translated things about why he's translated it a certain way um and um, and then also um just some facts about history and, and essentially almost like a glossary of of um, protagonists which is really nice now the editor uh, which is um you know it, he's done a, a lot of work here has then taken a piece of original work by um tolkien which is the homecoming of brifnoff um and it's added into the text as well now the homecoming of brifnoff is essentially a fictitious tale about two of brifnoff's servants who travel to the battlefield to um, recover his body and take it to ely cathedral um, where he's actually buried in the end and what's really nice is it is written as a essentially like a play um, and Tolkien has written it and it's essentially these two guys um, 
traveling on a wagon and searching the battlefield looking for their master and they talk about the battle they talk about what happened they talk about their views on everything and their feelings um, about their master and um, and eventually the events that happen they get set upon by some people who are pillaging the uh, the battlefield um, and uh, yeah it is incredibly fun and very very different from the other kind of things that Tolkien did um, you can spring for a, a um, uh, sort of a, a an all singing or dancing edition of this and that includes a CD where Tolkien's actually reading um, the part of one of the characters and his son Christopher Tolkien is reading the other um, so they must have obviously recorded this probably I don't know maybe in the 50s um, and he's creaking on a on a chair to make the sound of, of the cart wheel turning and uh, that sounded cool and the only reason I didn't get that is because I simply just like this front cover anyway I thought that this could would basically be a really good source to just try and do something um, historical and I'm really really excited so um, to give you an idea the I'm planning on how on playing with about three times what you see here so that would then, because uh, there's 24 men on each of these bases, um, so with about three times what I have here would roughly give me a one to 10 um, uh, uh, count from the number of people who are in the battle. Um, and then I'd want the equivalent plus a little bit more of Vikings. But just to give you an idea, um, because I wanted to use all the resin up in my 3D printer before we um, we moved. So I, I printed off all of the Saxons that I'll need. So there we go. There's, there's a there's a good amount of, of resin there, um, and I'm I'm really looking forward to it. These are really really fun to paint, and um, they've got a lot of character. So um, definitely one of the advantages of 3D printing or having someone who who has a 3D printer in your uh, in your club or in your in your hobby group. Um, that being said, I suppose you could do it with any Saxons or anything you wanted to. I, this whole thing has just come about. Um, rather out of the blue but I wanted to give you guys a real uh, look at, um, at what I've been doing um, I don't have my normal photo set up anymore that's in storage so I can't give you any kind of uh, the staged shots that I do normally however I will leave some close-up photos um, of the force down here um, I'm planning on doing um, an update video on this once I've probably finished the Saxons and then once I've finished the Vikings, but I do plan on doing a, 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 a video when I visit the battlefield as well and then translating that into a let's make the battle board um, which I think could be a lot of fun so I'm really looking forward to hearing your guys input um, what do you guys think are you, are you up for this kind of thing when you just find a battle and just want to do something a little bit different and find a way to uh, to game it because you're interested in it anyway um, I hope you're all well this will be the last video probably for uh, um, for a couple of weeks and I do apologize it thank you to everybody who's with all, all the messages that I've received wishing me luck in the new place and with the move and of course thank you to the channel members as well um, for uh, for sticking with me and um, and just chatting in the comments on the members post there uh, they, they, they're always really interesting and I enjoy the back and forth on there um, I'll hopefully be back on the PCP um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, I just that obviously relies on me having internet in the, in the new house. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. And in the meantime, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you all again soon. Bye-bye.